a monumental experience. Loosely based on the 1963 novel La Planète Assange by Pierre Bollet, this science fiction action film was a smash success following its April 3, 1968 release, grossing around six times its $5.8 million budget. The G-rated production by director Franklin J. Schaffer follows an astronaut crew who crash land on a planet in the distant future where intelligent talking apes are the dominant species while mute humans are enslaved. Hollywood icon Charlton Heston brings his larger-than-life persona to the lead role as a headstrong and resourceful commander who finds himself stuck in one impossible and unbelievable situation after the next. Shot in the neck while being rounded up, his ape captors think he's another dumb, silent human. But when his vocal cords heal at the conclusion of a long chase, he's finally able to yell out, Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! A triumphantly powerful moment that shocks the entire ape community and remains one of the best lines in movie history. But this scene arrives well past the halfway mark, as the apes aren't even introduced until a half hour into the 112 minute film. The opening act that sees Heston and his fellow ANSA astronauts fumbling through the desert searching for life are interesting and moody, but the film doesn't really turn a corner until we finally see those scary looking gorillas on horseback. Roddy McDowell and Kim Hunter portray sympathetic chimp scientists who befriend the strange talking human, while Maurice Evans turns in a fantastic performance as the despicable and uncompromising Dr. Zayas. The narrative themes touch upon the prevalence of animal cruelty, the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and science versus religion, with Hunter asking, how can scientific truth be heresy? Indeed, it's hard to watch the courtroom scene of this film and not be frustrated at the leadership's stubborn refusal to listen to reason or truth, a reality that sadly parallels today's politics. But just when things get a bit too upsetting, there's an impossible to miss, see no evil, hear no evil sight gag, which is nice. While the titular concept sure is a terrifying one, the movie unfortunately feels more like Village of the Apes, as only a single settlement is ever shown. This is not to say the scope of the film is unimpressive, however. Thanks to involved stunt work, award-winning makeup, and giant set design, it's obvious a lot of time, talent, and money were invested in creating this imaginative environment. Earlier, we're treated to some curious sound effect choices, though, like a weird <laughs> reverb on Charlton's obnoxious laughter, or a screeching scream heard when he discovers his female counterpart died in hyposleep. Visually, however, the film makes terrific use of the long Panavision frame, especially in wide group shots. Even if there are lots of distracting zooms, a technique popular in the 60s, but one that feels particularly jarring today. Early work from Jerry Goldsmith mixes loud woodwinds and rhythmic percussion for a very lively, almost jungle sound. The atonal score also netted Planet of the Apes one of its two Oscar nominations. The other came for Morton Hack's memorable costume design. And since it wouldn't exist as a category for another 13 years, John Chambers was instead given an honorary Academy Award for his groundbreaking ape prosthetics and makeup. Compared to the rebooted trilogy of today, the apes here mayn't look very realistic, but they never look fake either. The chimps, gorillas, and orangutans resemble hairy humanoid hybrids instead, allowing you to occasionally forget you're just watching actors in funny masks. It's almost impossible to discuss this film without mentioning its unforgettable final twist, a moment that has been parodied and referenced countless times in the 50 years since this film's release. So I'm just going to go ahead and spoil it for the few who aren't already familiar. Heston discovering the Statue of Liberty half submerged in the sand might not make sense geographically or even metallurgically, why hasn't the copper statue eroded yet, but it is an incredible final image with haunting implications. The Planet of the Apes is Earth. It is an absolutely stunning reveal and one that warns of man's continued hubris, with Heston's frustrated accusatory screams closing out the film. The whole sequence feels like the ending of a great Twilight Zone episode. After 2,000 years, Earth would undoubtedly look slightly different, but even still, you'd think skilled astronauts would be able to recognize their own planet. The stars, sun, gravity, atmosphere, and temperature should have all been clues as to where they really landed. This minor character deficiency, coupled with slow pacing early on, are my only real gripes. The success of this movie not only made an indelible mark on its genre, it also inspired four direct sequels, a remake, a reboot trilogy, a short-lived television show, an animated series, comic books, a video game, and one hilarious fake musical in an episode of The Simpsons. Still remarkable and entertaining a half century later, Planet of the Apes is a sci-fi milestone. And here's what the Movie Night audience had to say. Mm -hmm. 
Praising the story and the final twist, we all agree this is a truly awesome film. That does it for this quick excerpt, but if you'd like to watch more Movie Night, click or tap the thumbnails on the left. And don't forget to visit the Jog Wheel YouTube channel to see full episodes of this show, in addition to the other content I produce. My name is Jonathan Paul, thanks for watching, and have a good movie night.